Do you want to learn how to find awesome music fast and become a pro at using Epidemic Sound? These are my top five tips on how to do that. Step number one is to sign up with Epidemic Sound. If you don't have a subscription yet, you can go through a link that I have in the description to get a free month right off the bat. Then we've got to link your social media accounts to your Epidemic Sound account. To do this, navigate to the menu tab on the upper right and click account. This is where you'll see all your billing and subscription information. From here, you want to go up to the top and click safe list. This is the page where you can link all of your social media accounts your websites, and your podcast feed. If you have the commercial subscription, you'll also be able to clear individual videos for clients on this page. Now to clear your social media accounts, simply look up your YouTube channel, add it to the page. You can also type in your TikTok or Instagram handles. It's really simple. And don't worry because all of this can be changed later. It's not like a one and done thing. Now let's go back because we wanna find music. My next tip for new users to Epidemic Sound is to completely ignore the genre and mood areas in the browse tab. Instead, what you wanna do is go straight to themes. Themes is where Epidemic Sound has already curated playlists according to all sorts of different types of video styles. No matter what kind of video you're creating or feel you're trying to convey, you'll most likely find something very close to it on the themes page. I find this to be the easiest way to sort through and find the best songs out of the 40,000 plus that Epidemic has on their website. I've got a bonus tip for you. When you find the song that you want to download, you're going to see that you have two options. You can download it as a MP3 or a WAV or a WAV file. You might wonder what the difference is between these two files. And really simply put, the MP3 is a compressed file while the WAV is uncompressed. It's higher quality. Now, when it comes to stuff like YouTube and an internet stuff, you're not going to find much of a difference in your ears when it comes to MP3 versus WAV. I would recommend using WAV files if you're doing stuff like commercials, professional video production, Productions, that sort of thing, just because it is higher quality and some of the playbacks that they have might actually take advantage of it. MP3 is great for YouTube. The one time that you want to use WAV or WAV files for YouTube is if you're looping the video or rather looping the music because if the music file is specifically designed to loop, an MP3 actually has a couple of milliseconds in between at the beginning and at the end that is just dead space. It won't loop perfectly. A WAV file will. So if it's specifically the track is designed to loop that the end sounds like the beginning and it can just keep going and you can copy paste it, I recommend using a WAV file because you're not going to have just a very, very slight jump in between the two tracks, that's when you want to use a WAV file for stuff like YouTube. Tip number three is really important because it directly affects your editing efficiency when you're using the songs in your videos. This tip has done a lot to help me improve my editing speed. Check this out. Epidemic Sound has this site-specific volume adjuster for playing back their tracks in search. Not everybody knows this, but this is actually a super powerful tool. Let me show you. Open up your editing software like you're working on a video, but you haven't picked out the right song yet. In a new window, pull up Epidemic Sound and lower the volume of the site to around here. You want it pretty low. If you then play the track, you can go back to your video editing software and play the video, which will give you a feel for what it will actually sound like or look like to have that song that's playing at a background level behind your dialogue and behind your footage for your video. This way you can test out songs without ever actually having to download them. It's much, much faster this way. All right, let's talk about something slightly different. My next tip is not only for those mobile video creators out there, but also for anybody who wants to keep working on their video production even when they're busy doing something else. A lot of people don't know this, but Epidemic Sound actually has a companion app that allows you to have full access to their music library on iOS and Android. This is obviously great for creating mobile content. You can download the songs directly to your phone or your tablet and use them if you're editing on a phone or tablet. But if you're like me and you prefer to edit on your desktop, you can still make use of the app by using it to curate songs and playlists while you're out walking the dog or sitting on the subway. All of Epidemic Sound's playlisting features work perfectly on the app. That means that any of the saves or likes that you make while you're browsing on the app are also gonna transfer over to your desktop on the website, and they'll be there updated and available to you when you're ready to work on your edit. In my opinion, this is a very cool but often overlooked feature of Epidemic Sound, and it's a great quality of life improvement for creators on the go. So Epidemic Sound, thank you for the app. I really appreciate it. If you wanna learn more about Epidemic Sound's incredibly powerful playlisting update that adds a lot of features for collaborations and for music curation, you should check out this video that I did over here where I go into it in depth and how you can best use it for your production workflow.